Hello, my name is Allison Callender, and I'm the Curator of Art and Art History at the Barbados Museum and Historical Society. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to our first art exhibition for 2021, Atlantic Rhapsody. It features over 40 works from Robert McLeod. I chose this other selection for you to have a look at because while I speak about the importance of the sea in, and the ocean in McLeod's work, he also had an intense love of land. And in these landscapes that you see here and over here, these are interior views in, in the island where you see no sight of, of the ocean. But what that means is that he had a, in, a deep awareness and appreciation of the fact that the traditional landscape and modes of life were still present and still current in the Barbados uh, that he saw in the 1940s and 50s and that he recorded in these paintings. And so these interior landscapes, which do show a little bit of the sea, but these interior landscapes do talk about the vegetation, they talk about the changing character, the rolling character of the, of the land, they talk about the intense cultivation but also the luxurious vegetation that you see. And then there are these small uh, figures still traversing the landscape. And he's talking about the relationship between humans and the landscape that surrounds them. And that's an important principle in the work that he uh, came to project and to document throughout his time in the Caribbean. He also, however, had a deep love of trees and paintings like this one of the uh, sea grape tree are critically important because he understands there's a need to look in depth at the nature surrounding us. He doesn't allow human intervention to distract from the reality and the beauty of the, the tree formation. So that tree takes over virtually the entire space of this small painting. And the only reason that we know that human beings are around is because of the um, fishing boat just at the base of the tree. But he also then goes, he sort of opens up his lens and looks closely at paintings like these. He looks in depth at the foliage, at the um, plant life, the horticultural life, and at the, um, the life of uh, red fruits and um, scarlet valisier and other uh, beautiful flowers that he sees around him. And these plants are given an opportunity to demonstrate how important they are to human, human uh, interest, human knowledge, the way in which the, the, the breadfruit is cut and the knife used to use it are just brilliant, as are the luxuriant uh, leaves behind it. And cochineal cactus, this one below, is a very, very peculiar, almost surreal rendering of this particular form of plant life, so that you look in depth as a plant that you would normally stay very far away from. I also though want to point out this particular piece because it's one of a series that he's done um, focusing on, again, on the tree, the banyan tree um, is you know, spreading its branches across the picture plane and then the canopy that, of leaves above it is beautifully presented. And all of this majestic beauty in nature is presented so that you understand how minuscule human beings are within it and how dependent human beings are about the plants and the natural environment that surrounds them. So he was already in the, in the 40s and 50s speaking about the importance of preservation of natural heritage as much, much as he was in things like this about the preservation of cultural heritage. 
So we need to understand that. And then we have the opportunity to look in paintings like this, where he shows his love of other islands like Dominica and St. Lucia, which he was intimately acquainted with. So we do have this opportunity to see with the artist's eye continuous study because he returns to these subjects over and over again in his works. So he's continuously examining them and there are minute changes which continue to interest and absorb. We hope to see you either physically or virtually to see this wonderful exhibition of paintings.